In this video, we're going to derive the wave function for the particle on a sphere. So in a previous video, we talked about the particle in a sphere problem, and we got down to this point where we have um, a Legendrian uh, operator that's going to operate on a wave function, give us some constant times the wave function back again. And we have to uh, try to find a solution to this differential equation. And this is going to be a differential equation that is going to be a function of two variables, very similar to the problem that we looked at with the multidimensional particle in the box, right? The two and three dimensional particle in the box. The first thing you're going to want to do is to try to see if you can use separation of variables, right? We want to try the separation of variables technique on this function. Right, because like we saw with the two dimensional particle in the box, if you can separate the variables, then you can treat them as one dimensional problems and get the uh, the solutions to those individual diff EQs, put it all back together. So, um, so let's just break up the wave function and see what happens, right? So we got um, this wave function that we're going to build two functions. Uh, so first we're gonna have capital theta, which will be a function of theta and capital phi, which will be a function of phi, right? So we have two functions. Um, so we're gonna uh, separate these functions uh, into two, right? Uh, one function that depends on theta and one that depends on phi, right? So now we're going to expand the Legendrian, right? This lambda, expand the Legendrian. Right, so we've got one over sine square theta, second derivative of the wave function with respect to phi plus one over sine theta, dd theta, sine theta times the derivative of the wave function with respect to theta, it's gonna be equal to negative epsilon psi theta b, right? Okay, so this is gonna be our, our um, equation. So we're, what we wanna do now is to uh, substitute in our separated uh, wave function. So we're gonna have one over sine squared theta, second derivative of theta, times phi with respect to phi right so just substituting in the uh the separated function here theta times phi. Okay, so we've uh, substituted in our separated function, right? So um, so each of these functions is only going to be a, a function of a single variable, right? So if we do some algebra here, so I'm gonna skip a few algebra steps, but if we do some algebra here, we can actually separate these variables. So I'm skipping a few steps here, uh, but we end up with the following expression. So we end up with one over phi, second derivative of phi with respect to phi, plus sine theta over theta, dd theta, sine theta, the derivative of theta with respect to theta, and then that constant term out front, right? So, um, so if you notice here, right, um, we have separated these terms, right? So we have one term out front here that depends only on phi, right? So this depends only on phi, Right, since our function phi only depends on phi. And then this function only depends on theta. 
So this depends only on theta. And so we've successfully separated these functions. So similar, just like we did with the multidimensional particle in the box, we're able to separate a function, one with respect to X, one with respect to Y. Now we've got these two uh, pieces here, one that depends on theta, one that depends on phi. So now we have two, these two we can treat separately. Since we know that their sum is going to be equal to zero, that means that each one of them has, to, each one of these uh, expressions has to be a constant in and of itself, right? So we'll call the constant m sub l to be consistent with the quantum number that we introduced for rotational motion. So we'll have one over phi, second derivative of phi, with respect to phi, is going to be equal to negative m sub l squared. And then the other function here, right, sine theta, theta, right? So this one will be equal to m sub l squared, right? So Basically, right, if you sum these together, you have to get zero. So that's why they have to be equal to the same thing, only equal and opposite, right? So let's label each of these. So we'll call this one um, equation one, and we'll call this one equation two. Now, if you'll notice, equation one actually looks exactly like the particle on a ring. And so its solutions are exactly the same. So if for our solution for equation one, right, this function that only depends on phi would be exactly the same as our, uh, as our solution for the particle on a ring. So we would just have square root one over two pi e to the i m sub l phi, right? So that's the first solution here, right? Now, the second solution is uh, more complicated, right? So it's not going to be just as simple as plugging in a solution that we've already solved for. Um, this function that depends on theta is going to be solved by a set of solutions called the Legendre polynomials, right? So this function theta that depends on theta is going to be solved by the Legendre polynomials which we use the capital P to denote the Legendre polynomials. They depend on M sub L and L, so it depends on two numbers to be, uh, to be denoted for the Legendre polynomial. And it's a function of cosine theta, right? So, um, so these are the Legendre polynomials. The form of the Legendre polynomials, you don't really have to know, um, but we're going to make use of them. Right, so we have both of our solutions. So via separation of variables, the only thing that we have left to do is to put those together to get our wave function. So our wave function is gonna be a function of theta and phi. Oops, lowercase phi. Right, that's gonna be first that particle on a ring solution, right, that we had for the first equation, right? E to the i m sub l phi and the Legendre polynomials from the second solution. Now, together, these solutions are known as the spherical harmonics, right? So these are known as the spherical harmonics. And we use a capital Y to denote the spherical harmonics they depend on uh, quantum numbers L and M sub L, right? And they're a function of theta and phi, right? Now, the spherical harmonics, the actual solutions to them, like what they look like mathematically, you can probably find in, in a textbook um, or Wikipedia. Um, but the real utility of spherical harmonics, uh, you should be able to tell when I show them to you. So I'm gonna show you a picture of what the first few real spherical harmonics look like, right? These are the spherical harmonics. 
And if you've spent any time around a chemistry class, then you know that these look like orbitals and that is no accident, right? So um, these spherical harmonics are going to become very useful when we start talking about the, uh, the hydrogen atom. But for now, just appreciate their shape and the fact that they're explicit solutions to a quantum particle experiencing 3D rotational motion, right? Okay, so those are the spherical harmonics. Um, Lastly, we do get an energy expression for the three-dimensional uh, particle on a sphere. And that energy expression depends on the quantum number, L. And that, uh, that expression is just L times L plus one times H bar squared over to I. Also, L is going to be, um, so L is an integer and it can take on values zero to any other integer. So zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. And again, M sub L um, is going to be any zero plus or minus one, plus or minus two, dot, 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 right? So um, the L we call the uh, angular momentum quantum number and M sub L we usually refer to as the magnetic quantum number, right? Okay, cool. So that's the uh, that's the three D particle in a sphere in a nutshell. So we introduced the problem and we uh, we discussed the wave function and talked about its uh, its energy expression as well. So now at this point, we've talked about all three: translational motion, vibrational motion, and um, and rotational motion. And these solutions set the stage for us to discuss the hydrogen atom, which is gonna be the focus of the next unit. So um, using all of these solutions together and everything we've learned from these elementary quantum problems in order to be able to study the hydrogen atom.